All right, so we're currently doing our flight deck power-up checklist. However, we have determined that the outside air temperature is quite hot. Um, it was a hot summer day. And as we said um, in the main, uh, in main, the main tutorial, that uh, the APU should be powered up or is normally powered up when the outside air temperature is at least 18 degrees Celsius or if the external power is not available. We do have the external power available, and so I'll use it as a source of power, which will definitely help the APU not drain as much fuel. Um, but we're gonna use external power, like I said. If the external power is not available, um, of course you would use the APU source, and you wanna start the APU only once because otherwise the batteries will drain quite significantly when starting the APU. Another consideration is that if you have external power available and the temperature is not as high as it should, but not as high, or you don't really need the APU, but you still want to start the APU and use it in case for pushback or whatever reasons, because you're used to using the APU so much, um, you do not have to worry about refueling or any fuel issues when using the APU during refueling. Um, you only have to worry about aircraft um, with APU control it, or using the APU during refueling if the APU will take over the AC or DC uh, generator. You'll notice that when we start the APU in a moment that um, even if I turn on the generator and the external power is connected, um, the APU generator will not take over. That is a safety precaution. So if we were to refuel and the, the power source would switch from external power to APU generator, uh, the possibility of it could, uh, an issue happening during refueling is high, very, pretty high or higher than if you were just stay, to stay on the same source, if that makes sense. Um, so the system could glitch out, the refueling system could glitch out, and um, the fuel indications could possibly glitch out, things like that. It's nothing that would definitely happen, but it's something that could happen, which makes sense. Um, but this aircraft is does have a priority over the external power, so that means we should not be too worried when starting the APU. Um, even if we haven't refueled yet. All right, so we're now at the point um, where we needed to get uh, some power established. We already set the external power on, but we also decided that we want um, some pneumonic air um, in the cabin since it is fairly hot. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. The first thing you need to do is do the APU fire test. And we'll go and do that. And that is checked. And once that is done, We'll now you'll we'll now press the power button and you'll see that the fuel valve opens and you'll see a self-test um, commence once the self-test is complete you can go ahead and press the starter and the APU should start as soon as the APU is available you'll see the generator um, warn light illuminate and you will notice that when you're pressing when you press the generator push button in that the generator will not take over if the external power is on and connected of course as well All right, the APU is now available. You can see that the warn light just illuminated and uh, it is not recommended to turn on the generator even if you're using external power. Um, so like this, to have it in this position um, as that could cause some issues. Um, so keep the generator off even if you're using external power. Only um, turn on the generator right prior to switching off the external power so it can do a quick transfer. But keeping it on is not, not an ideal situation. After the APU has uh, started, before applying bleed, uh, bleed pressure, start the clock and wait about a minute for the APU to warm up. This is a good time to continue with your light deck power up flows as a minute might pass. Since we're using the external power as our main DC source or AC source, we'll go ahead and turn off the batteries. Um, we'll head down here, check our safety equipment, everything is on board, and we'll now initialize our FMS. Accept, accept. In the meantime, we'll also turn up the displays as we wish. And there we go. I would recommend before starting with the originating flow, before you forget, just keep an eye on the chron chronometer, wait for a minute to pass, and then you can apply the APU bleed. All right, so that was the longest minute I have ever 
pace, and I believe this chronometer is a bit delayed. I'm gonna be honest. But that's okay. Um, so a minute has passed. The APU now has had some time to warm up, so we can now apply the bleed air, and the aircraft will now be um, supplied with some air conditioning. I would also recommend, even though the, it's called to do it later, I would already turn on the recirculation fans just to get a bit more air, cold air recirculating as well. And the cabin should warm up nicely or even cool down in this case since we're doing it for the uh, cool down. And that is the uh, light deck power up checklist complete but starting the APU as well. All right, we've now got some de-icing to do. Even though the aircraft is clear, um, that's just a little, little minor bug right now that the there's no icing shown. But you can see that we're definitely in icing conditions, and we should. Plus, flight sim doesn't really show um, icing conditions as well as your life does. But we're definitely in icing conditions. Temperatures minus five degrees Celsius. It is snowing. It is, we're invisible moisture. Yes, it is definitely time to de-ice, and we're going to be talking about the de-icing procedure at the gate or at the, or at the stand preferably engines off that's the best time to do it um i will not be discussing i will be talking about scenarios but i will not be showing showcasing different versions of the icing i'll just be showing this one at the ramp and we're already pretty much set up uh, almost ready for the uh, for pushback we really just need to request clearance and all that stuff and then we can do the uh, uh the uh actually at the engine start checklist we already did the before start checklist so we can do the engine start checklist then so let's go ahead and do so. Before we request any a, uh, clearance to push back, we want to get the icing out of the way. And we're going to use the default one, uh, not default one, but the one provided by Majestic. I would always trust the one used by um, by the by the uh, airplane manufacturer or the airplane uh, developer f um, because they most likely have an integrated system where when you de-ice the airplane actually recognizes it, where if we were to use a GSX version, which I don't think even is available at the moment, no. Um, yeah, I, I think that would not be recognized. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's that's one thing I don't know if Majestic have integrated GSX comp compatibility with that. So I would always recommend using um, this de-icing right here that's provided with Majestic's airplane or q runner. So what do we need to do to set up for de-icing? Um, pretty simple. So if the engines are running, uh, it is preferred that the engines are shut down, which is why we're we're going to be discussing this scenario. Um, so, but if they are running, um, make sure that the bleed air switches are off, and that the you um, advise the op the ice operator not to spray the engines for obvious reasons. Um, once that is done, you can then already start your deicing. Um, procedure and we'll do that by pressing initiate we'll then initiate and then it will take a little bit of time so once the icing is completed um, very simple if the engines are running uh, so if you have done this after tag or during taxi or um, after engine start turn the bleeds back on so the engine bleeds back on um, of course after de-icing you want to wait a couple of minutes until um, you can actually apply the bleeds just to reduce congestion of fumes or anything that comes from the de-icing uh, fluids and then consider leaving the flaps up for taxi all right so we are now in uh, <clears throat> Vienna where this this uh, parking spot can also be used to start your engines right at the ramp and be able to taxi out and so this is a perfect scenario to show you case you guys um, how to do a start at the ramp uh, pretty much it is the exact same as starting the engines uh, when pushing back except you're starting two engines now before you're moving um, so there's really no big difference at all um, but one difference you can that I can uh, confirm is you could could keep the GPU connected um, until both engines are started because the GPU is w w very up uh, very up front and more in the center you don't have to worry about uh, uh, having to keep the GPU uh, or having to disconnect the GPU after one engine start. Um, we only 
you only do that really when pushing back with only one engine uh, so we can start we can, we can keep the external power connected until both engines are started then disconnect it and then we're headed out for the taxi so at this time so we're now at the engine start so we've just done our before start checklist so we just completed that we we also got a notification from the cabin that we're ready um, or that they're ready and so we're at the minute zero minute mark ready to push and start we would uh, then request uh, engine start from ATC that's where we're at right now and instead of calling GSX or ultimate ground crew X for pushback we would leave it um, alone but check the remaining stuff the doors and fueling lights should be all out which they are as you can see <clears throat> want to confirm that the batteries are now on anti-collision light set to red APU bleed off if we have the APU running and we want to confirm that the engines are clear clear on the right clear on the left we can now do the engine start checklist engine start checklist battery master main auxiliary standby batteries on on doors fueling lights closed and out any collision light red APU bleed off engine clear on two clear on two engine start checklist complete and we would now start the engine instead of the FO starting the engine when we push back we now start both engines ourselves with the following announcements starting two as soon as NH uh, rises go and put to start the feather start and feather and you wait for the engine to stabilize the engine will stabilize you'll know that the engine has successfully started and all the values are in the in the uh, proper positioning or in the uh, proper indications as well as the select light distinguishing or extinguishing you just heard the switch go back to the middle position the select light should extinguish once we get around three percent torque okay engine has started and now we say now we want to start engine number one and we do it Clear on one, starting one. Now we start engine number one. NH has risen. So we now give start to feather, start and feather. Now engine number one will start. Uh, start cut out basically. The select switch has gone back to the uh, neutral position. We'll wait for the engine to stabilize and the select light to extinguish. All right, both engines have started. We'll now contact ground to disconnect the external power. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. Please disconnect the GPU. Roger, disconnecting the GPU. And not to forget to turn off the switch first. Captain, the GPU is now disconnected. It is disconnected, everything is clear, and now we would proceed with the after start checklist and our after start flows. Everything from now on is as normal and as usual. Alright, so we are ready for departure. Everything looks good, We're ready to go. Let's do it. Check power. Power checked. Stop. 80 knots. Check. Flight attendants and passengers, please remain seated. Alright, so we have now stopped, told the cabin crew to stay seated for now. We're just assessing the issue real quick. If it is something that is extremely um, dangerous or important to evacuate, of course, you would not ask them to stay, uh, remain seated. Um, what you else, what you can say is that this
this is the captain, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. You can also say that, and then obviously you would want to shut down the engines and get them out of there as quick as possible. But uh, it's not, doesn't seem to be a very large issue. Um, we're having a little bit of overheating, apparently on the TRU, which can be serious um, as long as it doesn't go into a fire. However, it is definitely an issue that we would want to return to the gate for. And uh, if we wanted to do that, we would say uh, we would just continue our taxi, obviously let ATC know and ask and request uh, the after landing checklist. Just speak out after landing checklist and the aircraft will then be cleaned up and you'll do everything as if it was a landing. If everything is f fine, uh, everything has been fixed and uh, we think you can uh, try another departure. Uh, you can say, let's taxi back to the runway, and the first officer will then uh, do his flows as necessary, and the uh, FS crew will jump to the before takeoff checklist. So you would then have to do the before takeoff checklist once again. So here, I'll, here's an example. Let's taxi back to the runway. Check. You'll see he'll do a few things turn off the lights, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Before takeoff checklist now has been queued and we can now taxi back to the runway and do proceed as normal with a normal taxi. Flaps 15, before landing checklist. Flaps 15, landing gear. Down 3 green. Down 3 green, condition levers. Max. Max. Ox, standby, PTU pumps, on. Bleeds on min. FA notification complete. Flaps. Plan 15, indicating 15. Set and checked. Indicating 10, plan 10. Before landing checklist complete. Alright, so. This is the go-around procedure. Um, go-arounds can happen for many reasons. Unstable, um, ATC asks you to, you see traffic and sites that shouldn't be there, or for wind shear conditions. Although for wind shear conditions, you normally would leave the aircraft in its configured state. You would go around until the wind shear alert has gone away. Then you can start cleaning up the aircraft. In this case, we're just planning a normal go-around. And the phrase you would want to say is say missed approach check power flaps 15 thousand above if you're landing with flaps 35 or if you're landing with flaps 15 say instead of 15 you say 10 so missed approach uh, check out so you would say missed approach check power flaps 10. And everything else is pretty much like a normal takeoff. So he would say positive rate, you'll say gear up, uh, select heading select, or select nav, or um, select out cell, things like that. And then after 1,000 feet AGL, you would then say flaps zero, IAS 185, climb trails to the line. And then you're back at the uh, takeoff, or after takeoff flows. Control. Check. Five hundred. One hundred above. Minimums. Continue. Continue. One hundred. Fifty. Thirty. Ten. Misapproach check power flaps ten. Power checked. Flaps 10. Positive rate. Gear up. Gear up. 
acceleration altitude. Select heading select. Heading selected. Set heading 057. Lap 0, IAS 185, climb check goes to the line. 1000 to go. Alt cell. Heading 057. Set. Autopilot on. Autopilot's on. Alt star. Check. Climb checklist completed to the line. Then heading one two zero. Heading one two zero set. Notice how you do a missed approach. Of course, setting the heading in a certain direction is all based off of ATC and procedure, but I was just trying to demonstrate um, a little procedure here. So that's how you negotiate or initiate a go around in FS2 crew for the Q400. Alright, we're currently paused because this uh, system requires a little bit of explanation um, in case you don't understand what this is. And this is the last procedure we'll be talking about um, for the supplementary procedures, and that is the reduced noise profile landing. Um, uh, the uh, Q400 has a reduced repeller RPM to uh, decrease noise on approach and improve passenger comfort, so that's what this feature is for. And this is accomplished by pressing the uh, reduced NP button, which is located under M top. So if we check it out with the dome light, um, just quickly, here we go. Um, you will see that this is the reduced noise profile landing uh, push button. And once you press this, you should see a reduced noise profile indication appear on the top here. And no matter what, Condition, what the condition levers are set to, even if they're set to max, your RPM will stay to, at 850, which means reducing noise. Um, this is very helpful when landing in uh, at airports that require special noise abatement procedures, or if you're flying at night. For example, right now it's currently 10 o'clock at night here in Montreal, where it is quite helpful to keep reduce noise. And not only that, it's also for passenger comfort. However, you do not want to use this feature all the time um, and it's not used all the time because um, there is a there is a performance penalty of about three percent in landing distance and, and it does require a reduction in power for the approach and uh, which means that the responsiveness of the throttles aren't as great compared to max condition or uh, max check that one more time please captain uh, they're not as good as compared to the max uh, condition lever setting. If in case of a go around um, and you switch and you uh, set maximum power, um, reduced noise profile landing should automatically deactivate and your RPM should switch to 1020. Uh, so max RPM and that's an automatic system. So there's nothing you need to worry about there just in case. So how do we activate this uh, during landing in FS crew? Well, it's very simple. Um, the procedure when you call for the gear down will trigger the FO to do his flows for the la for landing. And so instead of calling uh, landing gear down or gear down, what you need to say is gear down reduced NP. What he will do is then he'll activate reduced NP via the switch here. And then he's going to do the rest of his flows, setting the condition levers to max and everything else. So that's an option for you. So uh, most of the time you'll probably just say gear down as that is just regular procedure. But if you're flying at night or any parts of the, of the world where um, reduced noise or noise abatement procedures are recommended or required, 
uh, using reduced noise is definitely an option for you. So let me demonstrate for you. Gear down, reduced NP. Gear down. Verify the indication there. Minimums. Continue. One hundred. any reverse thrust um, to reduce even further noise um, or to keep noise at a minimum that is used braking all right well that is the um, reduced noise profile uh, procedure complete